Good morning everybody. Uh, what we're going to have a go at this week is um, a scene that's going to have a lot of different textures in it. So I've chosen this uh, gateway uh, which has got a lovely um, gate that's uh, got nice worn woodwork in it, lots of stonework and a uh, brick wall behind and then the foliage um, and roses and lavender so there's lots of different textures and because there's lots of different textures we're going to have a go at treating it in different ways and what you can probably see I've already done I've used masking fluid to mask out all my roses now I'm going to paint my roses in sort of pale pinks and uh, creams um, or even leave some white so I have masked out where all the roses are going to go already and that that masking fluid is already dry um, bear in mind you can tell because your masking fluid will go transparent when you put it on. I've applied the masking fluid using this which is a colour shaper if you've never come across this before it's just um, like a rubberized point so the masking fluid comes easily off of it and I've just dipped into my bottle of masking fluid and splodged that on where I want the roses to be. I've actually added more roses than there are in the photograph um, Obviously I sketch the composition out uh, with a 2B pencil first so you can see light pencil work. I've not drawn all the foliage, I've just sort of put a, a very very pale edge in here and there to give me an idea where it's going to go. Um, but I was fairly specific on the sizes of the stonework on the path um, and the fact that the closer the stonework goes towards the doorway the narrower my sections were. If they're all equal the path will look like it's standing up straight towards you but um, the light sketching went in and then I've put the masking fluid as I say more roses than there are because I want to have a bit more colour um, and I've just left that to dry. The other materials that you are going to require is an old toothbrush um, because I'm going to be doing some splattering um, of colour to get some extra texture on the uh, stone blocks around the door and onto the pathway down here. So an old toothbrush or a stiff bristle brush that we can use to splatter some colour. You will need plenty of kitchen paper to mask off areas that we don't want to be covered by um, any of this texture. And the other thing that I've done in advance is I've taken a piece of, before we start anything else, I've taken a piece of greaseproof paper or tracing paper, I've laid it over the top of my drawing, drawn round it to mask away the gate itself, okay, that whole gate area, so that I can see exactly that I've got the right shape and I've cut that out, and when we come to actually texture around onto the stonework, I can place this over that gateway, totally mask it so I'll be able to texture around it and I'll end up with a nice crisp edge where the um, actual gateway is. So I'd suggest a piece of greaseproof paper or tracing paper is the easiest thing to use so that you can trace through and be very precise but if you haven't got anything like that, a piece of paper and um, or kitchen, kitchen roll, that's, that's fine, um, it's just a little bit more awkward. So we're all ready to go with everything we need. The other thing that I have done is I have uh, prepared my colours for the stonework in advance because that's where I'm going to start. I've listed all the colours here, raw siennas, burnt siennas, I've mixed a mauve with my Windsor Blue Alizarin Crimson, I've got a pale grey but you can see most of them are very pale. It's really important to add lots of water to your initial colours because if you get too much water in then the stonework's going to be too dark. So loads and loads of water to create really really pale colours for the initial washes. We'll go stronger later on but in these early stages very pale. And then basically we're ready to go. I'm now in a position to start the actual painting. So what I'm going to do is to work with all the type of stonework. I'm going to avoid the gateway at the moment and I'm going to concentrate on my lightest washes on the stonework itself. So I'm going to begin with a really, really diluted uh, raw sienna combination and it won't matter in these initial stages, the colours are so pale that if I go over any of the um, areas of foliage that doesn't matter and bear in mind that I can also 
um, not have to worry about um, avoiding where I've put masking fluid uh, so because that's all held back if you like I'm gonna have a vignette edge to this so a loose edged wash so I'm just going to pick up and work wet in wet and drop a few colors in but they're so pale um, at this stage I'm gonna just have very light colors for this underlying wash it also if you wish there's some areas where I quite like the idea of leaving a little bit of actual white paper to come through so I'm not going to worry about having colour over absolutely everything but just drop in if you're concerned that things are going to dry too quickly for you then wet the paper first you'll obviously have less control over what you're doing but um, if you are concerned about the um, how fast everything's drying particularly if it's a warm day then dampen that first as well with just with clean water so I'm dropping between colors now as long as these colors are really really pale I don't have to worry about the foliage color not going over the top but if you've mixed your colours too strong for this initial stage, then you'll find that your greens are going to be um, affected by the colour that you're putting down. But at this stage, my washes will dry so pale that it won't be a problem. So I'm just moving round these really light areas with basically the burnt sienna and raw sienna mixes and just washing them in. You can always use a little bit of clean water to fade them away, but I'm working into where the uh, lavender is going to go, so that'll be stronger, so I don't really have to worry too much about that. But slightly deeper colour coming through here, but it's all really pale, and I'm just going to end up with a nice loose edge. I'll come a little bit darker over this side I've got some greys while that's still damp I'll drop a bit of grey into some of these sections now if you are worried and you think oh that's gone a bit dark and I need to have some pale greens take a piece of kitchen paper and just lift out a few patches where you want some foliage to be while it's still wet and that way you don't have to worry about um, there's no point in masking for those but I can just lift a little strength of the colour off so if you drop something in Mine are all going to be so pale it's not really an issue but you can see that I can lift back while that's still wet virtually to the white of the paper so if you're at all concerned just do that before it has a chance to dry. Now I'm going to let that run down into where the ultimately there's a bit of soil coming through. drop a bit more grey in there just let it fade away and I'll do the same thing over on this side just be careful if you're going to go wet in wet that you can still see a shine on the paper this is not by any means the end of my washes it's just uh, the beginning really but what I want to do is just get a bit of mottled base colour coming through. I'm going to go onto the path. Well, actually, we'll go back up to this arch. I need to get a little bit more colour into this archway. Bearing in mind that I am actually going to be working with some splattering on top so I don't want to go too dark because I'm, I'm going to be texturing on top of this so these are just 
the initial washes. And onto the path, I can use my raw sienna, really pale raw sienna, which I can take over into where the lavender is going to ultimately be. I'll pick up a little bit of grey that I can mottle in there. Very pale colour variation. If things dry on you, let them dry totally, and then again you can go back later on, re wet with clean water, and drop the colour in stronger. Uh, up close to the doorway, um, I've got a slightly duller colour which I'm just going to touch in. But all of these colours are, are about as runny as each other, so hopefully. I'm not going to get cauliflowers with these, but it's important to um, think about the thickness of the, the paint as you're trying to build things up. Now I have got a little bit of mauve, which while this is still nicely wet, I'm just going to touch bits of mauve in, which will dry really, really pale. And add a bit more mottling to the pathway. down into this lower section. Just a bit more interest. Right, I think that that's okay. It doesn't matter if you get these little sort of cauliflower shape. Actually, I quite like them. They sort of add to the picture a bit. So um, I'm gonna let that dry. And while that's drying, I can be mixing up a selection of uh, light greens, because I want to put greens in for the position of the foliage, and I can also be uh, thinking about the colours for the uh, actual wood of the doorway as well. But I think probably light greens will be my next area to work on. Now that my background washes have uh, dried, I'm going to begin working with a selection of greens that I've pre mixed. So um, I've got a uh, some pale greens, these have got a fair amount of water and a couple of yellows that I can drop in. And I'm going to start off just dropping in very loosely some of these light greens. I've got a couple of different size brushes, so I've got a good size 10 pointed and a slightly smaller, uh, it's about a size 7. I'm going to start off with those so that I get a good um, loose edge to what I'm doing. But this is not going to be uh, really sort of highly detailed. Um, but I do want to get a, an interesting edge. So that's what I'm going to concentrate on. I'm right-handed, so I'm starting on the left-hand side of my picture, and I'm just going to begin putting these paler, paler greens into place. I want to get these into position, and in fact, you could be a bit more generous with the patches of foliage than you might think because once we start painting the brickwork what will end up happening is that you'll lose a bit of the foliage as you go so I might end up actually doing a bit more foliage than I originally thought just so that I can lose some when I inadvertently go over the top as I'm bound to with my next colour. Now while that's wet I've just got a slightly stronger green and I'm just going to touch that in so that I get them again it's all about making it interesting and having it a bit mottled and I'm probably going to come back and touch a little bit of, uh, of yellow into this as well but if you notice the outer edge I'm trying to keep the outer edge loose and bearing in mind I've got my um, masking fluid so I don't have to worry about going over the top of the roses. It's really difficult if you don't bother masking you're making life a lot more difficult for yourself. If you don't have masking fluid to work in this way the only other alternative is to ignore all the roses that, you're, that I've put in, paint the foliage as though the roses are not there and then actually apply the roses afterwards in 
in opaque gouache on top. Now you'll get a different effect, it won't be so uh, loose, but if you don't own any uh, masking, that's the other way in which you can work. It'll look nice, but it'll, it'll have a, a different effect to it. So um, just depends on what materials that you, you've got available. So I'm just trying to come down with these pale greens and establish. Now, I'm not going over all of the wall. I want little gaps where the wall can come through because that's going to allow the painting to breathe, if you like, and touch a bit of my stronger green in here and there. Now, before it has a time to completely dry, I'm gonna pick up a bit of yellow and just touch little bits of yellow in. I'm glancing at my reference, but I'm not being too pernickety about following it. But I don't want it to just look like a solid bit of wall. I'm trying to leave gaps and make sure that I've got nice, interesting edges to the foliage. Later on, I'll come back and work darker. So this isn't by any means the finished foliage. It's just establishing it where it is, how much foliage I want to have, and I'll be able to come back with some deeper greens later on and work into this area. So coming down into where the tops of my uh, lavender will ultimately be. yellow at this stage I think and have a bit of yellow on my brush. The only thing I am trying to do is make the colour fairly solid around where I have um, a rose because when that masking fluid comes off at that point I want the rose to be able to stand out so there I am making sure that the, uh, the watercolour is more solid and that the wall isn't showing through at that point. Meander some down here over the stone walling. Now I'm going to move down to a slightly smaller brush as I come across here. In fact, there's not much point in doing a great deal of detail because I've got my doorway to paint. But I just want to make sure that I'm breaking up the edge. Back again, and we need to go up through here. way up to the top. Smaller brush just to break up the outside edge. There's a lot of yellow tone towards the top of this one so I've got pick up some yellow on my brush. Back to my green. And again coming fairly tight to my masked rose. Bit of a gap. again. So 
I'm mixing between three different, well, two different greens and some yellow to vary the marks. And as you can see, it's the areas that are drying, it's drying quite pale. I will be coming back working into this, but at least I can see where I want to go with my, um, with my greenery. I just need to come down here and go lower down. I missed that bit out. So there's foliage lower down, which is coming through in between the, uh, where the lavender is. So I don't want to miss that bit out. Bit of yellow again. So once I've finished, completed this loose effect on this left hand side, I need to do exactly the same over on the right hand side, but it's a different type of rose over here on the right, uh, bigger leafed. So I'll use the same sort of idea, but I'll just show you ar around this top section. Uh, it'd be the same sort of idea, but what I'm gonna do is with a good pointed brush, um, I'm going to use the point of the of the brush to make sure that I have a few on the outer edge a few really defined leaf shapes not so imperative on the center I can come over with wash on the center but just on the outer edge I want to make sure I've got a few leaf shapes that you can distinguish so and that will hopefully get across a different type of rose. So a slightly different approach for a different sort of rose. And again, I'm leaving bits that I can come back and pop in some darker for some of the wall later on. Sure that I define the edge. I can move down to a smaller brush. Do some of this with a, with a smaller brush where it gets a little bit more fiddly. But I want the hard the watercolour to dry with some hard edges. So I actually want to see the shape of the petals, or, or the leaves rather. I want to actually see the shape of the leaves in certain areas. In other areas it can just be wash running into each other. So over here it gets a bit more solid. In certain sections I want definite pet, uh, leaf shapes being defined so I need to work my way down here and again while that's still wet some of them I can drop a little bit of yellow into to change the the shade slightly make it much more interesting if it's not all one flat green if you can get into the habit of touching color in while it's wet and wet in fact I've even got a little bit of purple Mix. What I might try and do is just touch a little bit of that in on some of the wet greens where it goes into a bit more shadow, even at this early stage. And see what effect that has. So I keep quite a loose look. So I will work my way round this section um, with bigger leaves, more definition on the edges of the leaves into this section. And then we've got some of the green established there. So that will just leave us to work on the doorway and these two sections. They're the last of the remaining white paper, which we will get the first set of washes on.
Uh, now that the uh, greenery is in on both sides and is dry, I'm going to move on to the next section, which is the gateway, and I'm going to do the wet in wet sections of that. I'm not going to worry about the detail of the metalwork that comes across the top or the dark at the bottom and the, the individual slats. I can paint that in later. It's just the wet in wet basis. So again, as always, going in with the lightest colour first, which I'm going to um, put in sections of my diluted raw sienna and that's going to be my base into which I will bleed other colours. So dropping that in, uh, not over the whole thing because I'm going to pick up some light grey and put that in as well but I do have to move reasonably fast. I've got some very pale uh, grey mixed which I'm going to run in and I do want this to blur together so the idea is that I move relatively quickly so that this is actually done while it's it's all wet. Again, if you're not confident about the speed that you have to work, then wet the paper with clean water first before you begin. Now, I've gone over the stonework there a little bit, which I want to keep light, so just use a bit of kitchen paper to mop that back. And once I've got this dropped in, then I'm going to drop in other colours. So just make sure that I keep that bit clean. Around the edge, mop up the excess at the bottom, and that's still nicely wet. So I'm going to, I've got a bit of grey that's got a touch of blue, and I'm going to streak some of that in right the way down. And again, I can do this, if that first layer dries too quick, just wait, wait for it to dry completely and then re-wet with clean water and then you can do this bit. So don't panic if everything starts to dry on you. All is not lost. Just let it dry, be patient, let it dry, re-wet with clean water. Bearing in mind again that this mix is stronger than the first colour. So hopefully, all being well, I won't get cauliflowers everywhere. I know it looks quite strong at the moment, but it actually will dry fairly light. I've got a little bit of um, a deeper, almost sort of browny tone, which I'm gonna drop in as well. And hopefully it'll mix on the paper starting to dry so I can only go so far I want these sort of little streaks to give me some of the texture on that woodwork I'm going to move down to a smaller brush and do some of the lines with a smaller brush again I must be careful not to um, do anything to uh, watery but I just want a soft edge on some of this and while it's still damp I can get a, a soft blurred line beginning to form. I'll end up having to put washes over the top of this I know but it just gives a bit of extra texture and I think this is starting to dry so I'm gonna have to be careful almost at the limits now, it's all beginning to dry. That colour's just crept over on this top section here. So I'm just going to blot that. Right. While that totally dries, before I can do anything else to it, um, I can't drop anything more in because it's, uh, it's too dry already. So I'm going to come down to the lavender and I've got some 
colours mixed with the lavender in advance. So some areas of the lavender are paler than others. The difficulty with this is that the greens are going to have to come in between. So I'm going to take a very loose approach to the lavender. Um, I'm not going to do all the tiny bits that there is in my reference. Again, if you really want to, if you like the detail and you don't want to do this looser approach, you can paint the greenery as though the lavender isn't there and then use gouache and put the lavender on over the top. If you like a much more precise look, then you can do it that way round. But I'm going to put a lot more blue on than I need, knowing that I can bring my green in in between. So I'm going for this sort of mottled pale blue approach to start with. It's quite warm in here, so this is going to dry pretty quick. So that's going down first. I will then come in with some deeper purples once I've matched this on the other side. Later on, I'll come in with green. So this is my light blue. I'm sort of using the flat of the brush as well as I'm doing this to bring it down in uneven lines. I'm trying out a different blue for this. Um, this is an indanthrody blue, um, but you can use whatever colours you want to. The other thing I should say is with the roses, you could change the colour of the roses if you don't want to do, um, you know, have whatever colour that you fancy. So if you fancy peach roses or deep red roses, do whatever you like. But again, when we do come on to the roses much later on, I will not be working with just one flat colour. I will be dropping a number of colours in. Again, it'll look much more interesting. So this is my pale blue, because I'm hoping that I'll get a little bit of depth going on in these, this lavender. So the light blue goes down first. While that's drying, I can then come back onto the other side and I'm going to try and bring in some of the deeper blues. This is a stronger mix of paint. I'm using uh, a size 8 brush that's got a good point to it and I want to just get the impression of the colour that catches on the tips of the lavender. No point in my bringing it across the doorway too much because I haven't finished painting the door. Um, so I can come back and do that later on. But And again, I'm actually going to put in a bit more of the darker lavender than there is on this left hand side. So that I get a nice contrast against the roses coming down in these sort of uneven streaks. Some of it a bit more solid than other areas. And it breaks up that top edge, so that edge that we had around the, uh, the lavender, you, you lose that. In the centre here, I've got more sections as it's sort of coming down in mounds. And again, put a bit more in than you think, because when we do come in with the greenery later on, you will lose some of this and look at the direction that the lavender fans out it's not all dead straight because you otherwise you won't sort of get that effect of it going in in mounds it fans across the plant
comes lower down as well, so I need to start broadening up some of the sections lower down. some of this slightly wrong, stronger colour so I've got something a little bit in between and do the odd bit with a sort of in between mix. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing over on this right hand side and I've got another sort of colour coming into the picture here. Um, once I've done that, most of our areas of white are covered. A little bit of grass down here that I can put in, uh, obviously the darks, but that's all the essential things. So I think the next stage, once I've finished putting the lavender in place, um, is to start using some of the textures and getting some of this uh, area marked off with kitchen paper and using the uh, toothbrush to splatter. So that will be the next stage. As you can see, everything looks slightly odd now because I have masked it all up, ready for the uh, texturing bit. So I've put my bit of uh, tracing paper over the door to cover the door, and then all the areas of pathway, lavender, and all the greenery that I've painted, I've used kitchen towel to mask it out. I know it looks a bit of a patchwork quilt, but the important thing is we want a loose edged um, sort of masking, if you like. Not every tiny scrap has to be masked, but the important thing is to use the kitchen paper and use a torn edge. So tear it up into pieces and then sort of layer it over it. And it's the torn edge that's important because that'll give a more natural uh, look to it rather than a totally um, sharp edge to everything. The only bit I want a sharp edge is around the gateway. I have got mixed up, ready to go, um, a lot of pale colours in all these earth tones that I now want to put onto the picture. So, if you've never had a go at splattering before, can I suggest that you trial it on a piece of paper first before you go ahead. So what I'm going to do is I've cleaned the toothbrush, I'm going to pick up my lightest colour first which is going to be um, a bit of raw sienna and I'm dipping the tip of the brush in it and I'm then on a piece of kitchen paper blotting off the excess colour so there's only a little bit of colour and they're going to hold the brush upside down and with my thumb I'm going to splatter the pale colour now I know this first colour you'll hardly be able to see keep going back picking up a bit more colour and then I just want to get a very delicate splattering of colour so you can control sort of where you put that first colour. I know this is going to hardly pick up for you to see but I can then add a little bit more raw sienna to that mix so strengthen it slightly and repeat the process so I'm just adding a bit more colour to my mix and picking up the raw sienna, blotting the excess off and then again I can just splatter a little bit of texture onto the stonework using that pale colour.
once you've put enough of that first colour down then you can move on to something that's a little bit deeper so I've got a bit of burnt sienna that I'm going to do and again I can take this up over onto the brickwork as well so I get a little bit of texturing but if you haven't masked out everything it will cover all sorts you can see it's going onto the background of my picture so make sure that you mask what you don't want to get covered and this is just to give a bit of interest I'm going to go a little bit darker I'm not washing the brush off in between I'm just picking up a few deeper colors I'm being quite delicate about it reloading Always remember to take the excess off your brush onto a piece of kitchen paper otherwise you'll get great big splodges on what you're doing this is just to give it a slightly different texture to create a bit of extra interest I'll be adding washes on top of this so this is just a texture And what I might end up doing is putting washes down and then texturing again on top of that. Now I do want to go in with a bit of grey tone, so I'm just going to pick up some grey again, take off the excess. So you can repeat this process once you've done some washes and splatter on top again in selected areas if you want the texture to come through, if you feel that the texture hasn't come through enough. And the more that you build up in particular sections, cautiously to start with knowing that I can always go back and do more of this afterwards I think I might bring a bit more texture into the brickwork but that might get lost when I start putting washes across the top top of this later on. Bear in mind that this will dry a lot lighter so it's worth keeping the masking on until you've completely finished, until it's completely dried so that you, you can see what you've got before you remove it. Um, I think I might leave it at that for the moment and we'll remove it and see what we've got under there. Take it away. I'll hold on to these pieces because I may want to mask again. There we go, so I've got some interesting sort of texturing around the doorway which I can now go back and um, start building up. 
the only thing is I haven't got any texture coming through here but I think what I'll do is I'll add some more washes and perhaps think about texturing again with the toothbrush later and just masking out around it and texturing on certain areas but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, let that completely dry and what I'm going to do is get some of the docks in in washes sort of around the doorway to begin to sink that in and start building up some washes on the on the stonework um, but while this is drying I can go back and begin to put a little bit of the greenery in between my lavender so I can leave that top section to dry and go on to the lavender and using again a few different mixes of greens that I have got ready I can start bringing in some of the, uh, the greenery in between so start over here on the left and come in with a few bits of loose as I as I mentioned I have put in more color than is really there knowing that I'm going to lose some of that as I come in with this bit of wash so I've got a couple of different Green, some of them slightly more yellowy and I'm trying to apply them in sort of strokes that will follow the angle of the growth of the lavender. I'm not going to fill every gap but I am going to try and get lose a lot of the white of the paper that I don't want or the light colour some of the some of the pale blue that I put down I've got some slightly deeper green mixed down here I'm just varying my mixes of colour I don't want to lose all of my pale blue so I'm going to leave bits of that to come through. of yellow into this as I'm going. A bit more variation. Make sure that this outside edge is nice and broken up. Look at the direction of the growth. do exactly the same to this section on the left hand side and to the main bit over here and then we'll start to establish we'll have got rid of um, and most things in in place and then I can come back and concentrate on the archway itself it's time to start working on getting more shaping into the stonework around the doorway so I need to try and get some washes on to push that recess back um, I'm just working with the same sort of palette of colors greys, muted browns um, and a variety of brush sizes from about size 6 down to a size 2. I'm going to use my size 2 brush to begin to bring some wash through. Now I do have to try and be quite sharp with my edges so quite precise to get that sort of clean cut look to the way that the stone has been carved into. So 
So I'm going to come round with my wash and then use some water to fade that line away. There we go. And I've got a little touch of grey that I'm just going to put into that while it's still wet and hopefully it will bleed across just using the tip of the brush. But it's quite warm in here and I've got to be really careful um, that it hasn't dried already. And there's a little bit of tone just on the underside to make the stonework curve round. In fact, I'm going to use this sort of um, grey just on the inside of the, of the arch here. Get a bit of the tone. Coming through there. It's quite subtle, but it should help to make it look like it sort of rolls rolls around a bit. And again, I can take a line of that through. And I can work some tone into the stonework up here. I know we've got the splattering, but I actually need to get a bit more shape into this stone. So I'm going to run some thin wash. I'm using transparent colours, not opaque colours, so that um, as long as I don't do too many layers, my splattering from underneath will continue to show through. And I'm just going to use some water to soften some of the edge. Hopefully, what will start to happen is that a bit more of the, uh, the shaping of the carving will emerge. So again, just using a bit of water to soften some edge. I'm going to come up to the top and this cracked stonework here. So again, I can afford to let that part be quite sharp. drop a bit more dark. in at that point. And then there's a bit that's partially concealed by some undergrowth which I haven't actually painted in. Some leaves but I'll just change the colour slightly and get a bit of that slightly more terracotta colour. So back to the other side of the arch. Because I'm right handed actually the left hand side is easier than the right hand side to do. Um, so I'm going to come round with my brown tone and try and follow. I can still see my faint pencil line. I originally put in, do my line and then straight away work that in with a bit of water to soften the inside edge. And back to my bluey grey tone and touch that in along the top edge. started to dry so I'll just have to use some more water to move that around. And the grey again comes down and you get that inside edge around the doorway. This is all being done with my size 2 brush so that I've got a lot of control. When I've done the stonework, I will be able to see how much more tone is required on the door. That's why I'm working on this section first. Fades away there. And then we get some shape. 
sharp line work coming across towards the foliage there. I'll just like work that into my grey and a bit of cast shadow underneath it. Down this side of the block is very pale, but it actually has got a tiny bit more tone where the shape of the block falters. So I've diluted my grey even more, and I'm just going to run a very dilute wash over that stone block so that there's a, a facet on it, if you like. And I can do that down the parts of that same angle further down. Really pale. It's not so obvious on the lower blocks. It sort of fades in and out. I'm not going to wash it right to the edge. Come down to this and there's a sort of a bit of a maroony colour. I'm just going to drop it there as well. Okay. Now I'll have to wait for that side to dry, but I'm going to do exactly the same on the left hand side of the doorway but I don't want to drag my hand through things so just let that completely dry. While that is drying I'm going to move up to my slightly um, my size 6 7 brush and I'm going to begin to lose some of these light areas in between the foliage so I've got this sort of maroony brown tone mixed and I'm just going to come in between some of the gaps to get rid of some of this light. I can be fairly little dobs of colour. It doesn't matter if I go over some of the, uh, the leaves because they're sort of in the shadow anyway. Um, as I come round towards the lighter bit of the wall, just use some water and fade the colour out. So I'm going to drop it in close to the leaves and get the shadow it's almost like a shadow, but it's just being cast against the wall so that we lose some of these really light areas. Bear in mind the masking fluid is all still on, so I don't have to worry about avoiding the roses. That has not moved. And while that wash is still wet, it is still wet again I can get a little bit of grey and in the darker areas I can just touch a bit of my grey in for interest it looks more interesting than having just one flat colour and it takes it into the cool a bit into darker sections come in between some of these bits of foliage what should happen is when we reveal, ultimately reveal the roses, they'll be set against some quite, you know, reasonably dark areas. I need to come down towards the top of the lavender, but go back to my small brush because I want to pull the colour in between. So I can pull some of the wash down in between. fade it away. Well, it's still wet, although it's really difficult to keep it. It's very warm in here. It's quite hard to keep this still wet. I'll drop a little bit of the grey in. I'm going to move up and, again, still using my small brush, 
come in and get rid of some of these light patches in amongst the foliage. There's a lot of shadow being cast by the volume of the uh, of the rose leaves, so I just need to try and lose some of these light bits. This is one of the reasons I suggested actually putting in more greenery than you might um, think because you will lose some of these shapes as you, you know, you will lose some of the leaves as you come over. I might actually, while they're wet, um, I might just uh, drop in a little bit of burnt sienna into some of these just to, just to vary the colour a bit as I come across and make it slightly lighter as I come up. And on the outside edge I do need to, I'll take some of the colour but I just want to fade it away. I don't want to have too firm a a line so I'm just going to fade that away but at the base just stronger colour and then again back up to water fade it out a bit indications of some of the actual texture of the stonework I can add in a bit later so if I want to you don't have to put all of that in, up to you how much detail that you want to add. So I need to do this really in between and around all the leaves as much as you wish. Just be careful not to overwork it all but I will need to cast a little bit of shade or across the stonework here so I'm going to use my small brush, I've got some grey on the brush, I'm just going to come across and cast a bit of shadow over there and then fade my colour in wet in wet, let it just bleed across. Pick up the grey, so it's, I'm using this sort of burgundy and greys and sort of working between the two. Little bit of burnt sienna for good measure to come through. And hopefully, what will begin to happen is it will start to look like it's been pushed back. So, I need to do that, I'll finish doing that on this side, and do exactly the same thing over on the left hand side and finish this bit of stonework. And then I'll concentrate on the door and the pathway for a bit. Now that I've done some work into the uh, back wall uh, behind the flowers and through the flowers, I'm going to wait for that to totally dry and I need to adjust the tones on the door itself. So I'm going to start using um, some very thin greys to tone things down because uh, that door is fairly shadowed so I need to run a very thin wash of grey down over the door to mute it and while I'm at it drop a little bit of raw sienna in there. Now I've got to be careful because I don't want this because there's some blue content in here I don't want it to go green so I've got to be a bit careful um, that my grey isn't a Payne's grey because that has a high content of blue and uh, I will definitely get green streaks happening. But to bring the wash over and mute the whole door. It's too light at the moment and needs to be toned down but I'm going to pick up various of the same colours that I've been using throughout the painting, these earthy tones, and wash some of those in. Back 
back to my grey again, bring that right down over the whole of the door. And streak a little bit more dark in while I have the opportunity. I'm using adding a little bit of my blues in at the same time to darken the tones down. And then I'll have to see how that dries. I've got to let this dry completely before I can put any of the slatting and the uh, metal work on the door so I just want to get the tone dark enough to begin with. So while that's drying off um, I'm going to move onto the pathway and just get a little bit more definition into the path so back to my small brush and some of these earth tones and just begin to really look carefully at where I need to go slightly darker and move the colour round with the tip of your small brush because I don't want to achieve this as a flat wash I want to do a little bit of mottled tone so I've got a couple of flagstones here that need bit of attention. Just a little bit more definition. It's a mini wet in wet really. This one does need to be darker. But I want to leave the kind of mortar in between to get the division between each, each flagstone. That's why I'm not wetting the whole thing again just treating each flagstone separately and dropping a tiny bit more colour into each one. Just to establish the back edge. Also if it's warm as it is in here, um, one flagstone at a time is much more manageable with the, uh, the temperature. remembering to use clean water to move things down. Now on this one there is actually quite a bit of sort of shadow being cast by the, the lavender so I can drop the shadow in and that will help anchor things down. So I've got shadow being cast all the way across I've got to try and keep the shadow with a soft edge to it, so using clean water to keep the edges nice and soft. And then I will just bleed in a bit of stronger colour while that's still wet. Hopefully that will give the impression of the shadow. And just using some water to soften edges. And I can move back down to carry on with the other flagstone and I just want to get a touch more colour sort of into some of the corners that's a little bit on the blue side I think. Block that off and go in with something that's a little bit more mauve. So loads of water. And just 
have that catching this top edge. doing the whole of each flagstone I'm just picking out little bits which I think need a touch more texture and again softening with clean water Every time you finish a bit, um, look back and see if you've got the tonal values right. If, if you're too light or not light enough. In fact, as we come forward on these ones in the foreground, I think what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of warmth because warm colors have come out towards you. And so I'm gonna warm the flagstones up at the front to help try and increase that sense of depth in the picture so I will put a little bit of my mauve tone in in places but I will also just drop in some raw sienna forward again this front one. I need some more at the back of this this flex stone. And again just wet it in with water. Right. That needs to dry off and then what I'm going to do is to paint in the bands down the door, across here and the dark bit of shadow that's immediately underneath and then we're on the home stretch once that's dry I will take off the masking fluid and the last thing to do really will be to get the flowers into place as you can see I have been trying to give the impression of some graining in the uh, wood on that door so I've been working with my size 2 brush and my uh, rigger brush using a Payne's Grey mainly um, and I'm just going to try and demonstrate on the final panel what I've been doing. So not using something that's too strong a mix because I don't want the door to look stripy. Um, I've been starting to put really really fine marks in trying to follow the sort of grain of the wood in the different directions that um, the, the grain goes and any sort of eyes in the wood might be um, using my slightly larger size 2 brush some of it turns to wash and some of it just stays as a, a fine line move down onto the lower section and put a few sort of thicker bits in with the size 2 brush the very point of it I should say 
again, following that grain coming down. By the time this dries, it should dry really pale, just, just enough. This is if you want to put this kind of detail in. You don't have to, you can, can leave it at washes if you want to, but this will be, give a, a better effect of the wood grain. So the idea is we're not obliterating the washes we put down first. We still want those to come through, but this just gives added texture on the top. So I'm going to come down below. And then back to my size two brush, slightly thinner wash. So that I get light and shade within it. It's not one flat texture on the top. Back to my rigger brush and just pull a few fine lines down. Eye in the centre of the wood. Okay, so I don't want to go too far with this. A little bit more wash, I think, just on that section of the door. Right, okay. Um, the other little bit I'm going to do is just to give a hint. I'm not painting any every brick, but I've got this sort of brownish, um, burgundy colour mixed, and what I'm doing is I'm just going to hint at the position of some of the, the brickwork a little bit at a time straight into some water and then actually sort of soften the edges with the water so it's not too obvious just had the odd hint coming through in between Again, so that we've got a different texture to indicate the, the brickwork. I'm going to come down a bit lower here. And because it's an old wall, I can afford to be quite uneven with my, my marks into water. Soften it all the way, and that should just give enough of a hint of the stonework. I can do one or two bits up here as well. And any other areas that you think you might want to, to put that, if I look at the other side of the door, the left hand side of the door, um, the brickwork's not so well defined here. I've done some up in this lighter area. I've gone nowhere near as dark as my uh, reference photograph is, but I do want to just hint at a little bit of, of brickwork just coming through in places, but again, Keep it really soft. The odd little line that goes into the in between the roses. last bit of brickwork is just going to come through here. Again, 
soften so I haven't painted the stone, the brickwork in nearly as much detail as there is in the reference. I want to keep it quite loose and impressionistic. Um, but the last step for me now, really, I do have a bit of shadow to put down on some of the soil here, so a little bit darker. But basically, I now need to, once all these washes have completely dried, take all the masking fluid off and then paint the roses the colour that I want them to be. So. When you remove masking fluid, I'll just sort of demonstrate one or two, you can use a putty rubber or a clean finger and just gently rub at the masking fluid and it's really important to do it, don't be too rough with this and gently remove the masking but all washes must be bone dry otherwise the masking fluid will tear the paper so leave it only do this when you're absolutely sure that your um, colors have totally dried it around it once I've removed all the masking fluid there's no point in my painting a couple of flowers now because I'll have debris on the page I need to remove all of it make sure the page is nice and clean and dry and then I'll come back and paint the roses as you can see I've completed some of the pale roses on the left hand side of the painting and I've put a very light uh, permanent rose wash um, over the roses on the right hand side, let that dry and now I'm just going to go and give them a little bit of shape so I'm sort of making it up a bit as I go along but I've got a, a combination of quinacridone magenta which is a sort of shocking pink and I'm just putting the odd line of that in and the centre of the rose, a couple of lines around it and then using a little bit of water to blend it in a bit and that's really more or less all I'm going to do to give some shape to the rose. So I'm moving round from one flower to another. I've also got a little bit of permanent rose with a touch of an orange in the centre just so there's a bit of more vibrant centre on some of the some of the roses that are looking at me head on. Sweep a bit of colour around, but to make it look interesting, try and make the roses um, have the impression that they're facing different directions. Give it a much more natural look, and fade some of the colour colour out here and there. centre of the rose tends to have a fairly angular look so if I do a few sharp lines and then just run water along the bottom should give the impression of a centre to the rose this one I'll turn a different way. So I'm using two tone of pink on top of that very pale base that I put down. I have repeated the roses, so I've repeated some of the shapes more than once. Um, because I wanted to have more colour. So I'm just remembering to look for the shape of the rose that I've repeated so that I can paint it in a similar, similar fashion. Come in with a little bit of that uh, pink with orange in it just to give a slightly brighter centre.
really finishing off the roses is more or less the end of the painting. Just check when you finish the roses, just check all your tones, make sure that you don't need to make anything stronger, um, that you don't need to up any of the washes, but we're really on the final stretch with this now. strokes in, try and shape the rose slightly, and a little bit in the centre, a slightly stronger colour. I'm trying not to overwork them because they're very small and I want them to be, hopefully, just an impression. use a little bit of water to soften some of them. One more at the top. more or less it. I have just put a hint of some uh, branch work in between. Um, there may be one or two more sort of little touches to do but basically I think it's finished. <laughs>